Hello everyone and welcome to my channel. My name is Crown and today we are going to have some more stories that I hope that you will enjoy. But before we start, it would be so much appreciated if you would subscribe to the channel, like the video if you enjoyed it and maybe leave a comment down below. These simple clicks would mean a lot to the future of this channel and really reward the effort that I put in every day. And now, without further ado, let's go! I worked at a charcoal chicken joint in a small shopping center with about 10 stores in it. The shopping center had a public bathroom on the other side. This is obviously run by center management and the cleaners they hire, and not by our chicken shop, which is on the other side of the complex and does not have a bathroom. A lady comes in with her baby and is absolutely livid. I'm talking red with rage. It was just me working there because my co-worker and manager called in sick for the day so I was trying to think back to any mistakes I may have made and came up empty. She finally gets to the counter and starts yelling telling me that I should be ashamed of myself. I asked her what's wrong and say I can rectify the issue. I just need her to calm down and tell me the problem. Apparently she had gone to use a parent bathroom with her baby and there was urine on the floor and baby stuff on the changing table. And I need to go and clean it right this minute before someone gets AIDS and because her baby needs a change. I tell her sorry but I just work in a chicken shop. The public complex bathrooms are not my responsibility. I tell her she needs to knock on the cleaner's door opposite the bathroom and they will help. She was huffing about me wasting her time and being entitled but leaves to go to the cleaner's room. At this point I think it's all over but no. About three minutes later she comes back even more livid than before and she yells, the cleaner isn't answering, you need to do it now. I tell her I'm sorry but I do not know where the cleaner is. I do not work under the same management and again, the bathroom is not my responsibility. She keeps unintelligibly screaming things so I left to get our record book, out back and look at the emergency contacts to find the center manager. I apologize to the lady to try and get her to calm down and offer to call the center manager to see what can be done. I go out back to make the call and the manager picks up and I explain to her I've got a lady screaming at me about a dirty bathroom and I'm working my shift alone and don't know what to do other than to call. She tells me she will call her cleaner and see what's up. She rings back to tell me the other cleaner did not show up for his shift and the other cleaner is on break. I hang up and tell the lady that the cleaner will be back within 30 minutes or she can go to the McDonald's across the street who also has a change table. This was not good enough for her. She reaches behind the counter for a bottle of cleaning spray and literally walks behind the counter to look at the back where she sees a mob. I'm standing there dumbfounded processing the fact that she just walked behind the counter and she thrusts the mob bucket and spray at me and tells me if the cleaner is not here it is my responsibility to go and mop it up. I tell her to get out of the kitchen immediately or I will call the police. And she stands there not moving telling me not until I clean it up. At this point I'm like what the hell. And I tell her if your baby can't wait half an hour or the car rides home, go to the McDonald's. I am not cleaning it. My job is to cook fries and chicken and not to clean the amenities of an establishment I do not work for. She yells no and so I threaten to call the police again. She stands there as if to call my bluff but I reach for the phone and I start dialing. She walks out the door yelling and I think it's finally done now. Thank God. 10 minutes later she shows up with a cop saying I threatened her and her baby. I just gave the cops my statement in the video footage complete with audio and they arrested her for trespassing. That was probably the most insane shift I've worked. Keep in mind, whilst we were not busy at the time, there were customers trying to order and food being cooked the whole time. Dialogue isn't exact but pretty close to what was exchanged. 
At the time, I was 15 with a slim build. 120 pounds, 5 foot 7. Backstory My parents and my old neighbors decided to do some post-Christmas shopping for the discounts. They brought their kid, so I was dragged over to watch him as they shopped. I was allowed to bring my switch to keep me occupied. The neighbor's kid was pretty obedient and trustworthy when it came to me. I'm like a big brother from another mother to him. After arriving at the mall, the neighbor's kid and I headed to a group of couches close to a small playground and those stationary rides. It was in front of a major retailer, so there were a few parents and their children there. I sat down and told the kid to go play, but don't leave this area. He understood and went off to play with some other kids. After about half an hour, he returned and climbed up next to me. I had downloaded a game for him in case he got bored. I opened it up and told him to play, but do nothing else with my phone. It was like Candy Crush, but not any of their brand games. For a few minutes, he giggled happily as he passed each level, and all of a sudden, can I play? An entitled kid appears and he asks me this, and then a neighbor's kid asks me, can he play too? No, it's only for you. I turn to the kid and say, I'm sorry, but it's only for him. The entitled kid pouts and wobbles off. Not five minutes later, I see a woman's feet in my peripherals. I was playing elbows on my knees. I take notice. Can I help you, ma'am? She gets angry and asks me, Why won't you let my son play that game? Pointing to my phone. Because it's my phone. And I don't feel comfortable handing my phone out to anyone. Then who's that? That's my neighbor's kid. The neighbor's kid had looked up by now and asks, What's going on? Nothing, just keep playing. The entitled mother then turns to the neighbor's kid and says, Give me the phone. No, don't give it to her. Then she turns back to me and says, I bet you don't even deserve that phone. And it looks like you're rich enough to buy a new one. She points to the console. It doesn't matter if you think I deserve it or not. And this was a gift. My brother bought my Switch with some of his bonus. I don't care. My son deserves to play on your phone more than this kid. I was sitting far from the other parents because I wanted to focus on my game. But it was getting loud enough for a few parents to glance over. My neighbor's kid respects everyone and is well-mannered. He wouldn't have told me to tell another kid to let him play if this was the other way around. I was getting a little heated by now. I didn't want to deal with this idiot during my winter break. Then why won't he listen to me, huh? One, because he knows it's mine. And two, because he respects me over a random stranger. Like I said, I said I was like his older brother. I had known him since he was born and visited him once a week when I lived in my old neighborhood. You should listen to me, you little jerk. You need to give me your phone and leave. I was taken aback. I was furious, but made sure not to curse. Me shouting at this point, What is your problem, woman? This is my phone, and I can do whatever I want with it, and I don't want to give it to you. My outburst caused everyone in the vicinity to look over. I heard people whispering. She shouts too, Don't you raise your voice at me. I'm an adult. You're just a kid. Didn't your parents tell you to respect your elders? Yes, but not to a piece of trash like you. The entitled mother tried to slap me, but I plucked and pushed her arm away. Then she went for the phone. She ripped it from the neighbor's kid's hands and stuffed it into her purse and ran. It was more likely a quick wobble because she was wearing heels. I handed the switch to the neighbor's kids and sped off to get my phone back. She was pretty slow, and I averaged 7 minute miles. I was able to catch up. Everyone in the vicinity was looking up. I did not want to hurt her too badly, so I grabbed her arm and tripped her. She fell, but I slowed her fall. I had pinned her down by the arms and went for the purse. I heard heavy footsteps and noticed the mole cop running at me. Get away from her, young man. No, she stole my phone, sir. The entitled mother fake crying. Help! He was trying to steal my phone. I ran and he tackled me. Get away from her. And ma'am, come to me. I obliged and she did what was told. 
The security guard asked her a few questions. He then approached me, keeping an eye on the entitled mother, and I told him my story. Do you have any proof? Yes. My neighbor's kid was waiting there, pointing to the play area. He was next to me when it started. He brought me and the entitled mother to the area and asked the neighbor's kid questions. And he supported my story. He asked a few other adults. Meanwhile, the entitled mother is just smirking. Tripping her was pretty incriminating. The security guard returns and asks me to describe the phone. It was a black Motorola with a clear case. And the lock screen was a bridge leading to a beach. I also said that there was a fingerprint sensor on the back of it. He asked the entitled mother to take out the phone. And she wasn't smirking anymore. It fits the description. The cop then asks the entitled mother to unlock the phone. She tries a few times but can't open it. I try and it instantly opens. The entitled mother makes a run for it but gets grabbed by the cop. He arrests her. I told him that she had a kid. He went to get the kid. Before leaving, he also gave me a stern warning not to leave a child under my care unattended. And I said I was sorry. I never saw the entitled mother again. After my parents came back, the neighbor's kid told him what happened with his limited vocabulary. I elaborated and was praised for my actions but also disciplined for right and wrong actions. I, 35 male, have a young brother, Todd, 29 male, who had a complicated birth and had to stay a month in the ICU, and because of that my parents have always doubted on him and almost denied him nothing. Even if it was to the detriment of my sister, Abby, 32 female, and I, my brother drinks, and has, on more than one occasion, made himself the center of attention at either my, my sister's, or a cousin's special event. Because of this, Appy and I have a strained relationship with Todd and our parents. Unfortunately, Todd met and fell in love with Lucy, 24 female who announced her own pregnancy at the baby shower my mom held for Appy. When I proposed to my wife, Michelle, 30 female, I just wanted to elope, but she really wanted her family to be there, so I invited my family out of obligation. While out, my best man Jim, 35 male, noticed a receipt from a jewelry store slipped out of Todd's pocket. Jim confronted Todd about this, which led to an argument. Jim told me everything and I told Todd that he was no longer going to be a groomsman, because I knew he was going to propose at my wedding. Todd cried to our parents, and which led to a blowout. In my parents' eyes, since Todd never admitted that he was going to propose to Lucy at my wedding, I was unfairly judging him. I refused and brought up Todd's past behavior. My parents couldn't refute this and got Todd to agree to not try anything at my wedding. This wasn't enough to convince me to let him be a groomsman, but I warned him that if, as a guest, he'd try anything, I would make him regret it. Fast forward to the wedding and surprise surprise, Todd walked over to Lucy and proposed to her during Michelle's father-daughter dance and did it in a way so that everyone would notice. Cue my revenge. Jim and I had hired a woman to pretend to be Todd's side piece who cornered Todd and Lucy and claimed that she was pregnant with his baby. Todd denied this but when she called his phone, I gave her his number and missed with Todd's phone to incriminate him. It didn't look good. Lucy threw the ring back at Todd and left in tears. When Todd saw the smile on my face, he knew that it was me, and I didn't respond to a single call slash text from him or my parents until after the honeymoon. Lucy had thrown Todd's stuff out and has been denying access to their kid. Todd is furious and is demanding that I clear his name. I sent him a text saying that I had no idea what he was talking about, as well as a screenshot of a bill for the wedding and gave a vague message demanding reimbursement for half of the wedding costs. Michelle knew the whole time what I was planning and gave me the green light after Todd ruined her moment with her dad. So I felt pretty good. But now even Abby thinks I went a little bit too far. But oh well. Thank you.
And now we have reached the end of today's stories. Thank you for watching and see you next time.